Good morning, Coasties, and welcome to Sunday. We were just listening to Sunday by Corinne Hawthorne. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Yes, it is Sunday. Sunday is hopefully a chance for you to rest and unwind. Hopefully it's been... Hopefully. I'm actually, yes, I am. I'm hoping and crossing my fingers and toes and everything in between that you are going to have a fantastic day. Guys, we've got lots to be thankful for. It is a... um, It's the beginning of a new month. And as crazy as it sounds, it's one of those months that we kind of move into the silly season, if you like. We're moving into that period of time where we're doing that wind down, that reflective stuff, but we're not quite there yet. So, uh, yeah, I do hope and pray that you're able to do a little bit of that this morning, just that wind down stuff before the week gets a bit crazier again. Um, But yes, welcome. I am Lindy. I'm your Sunday morning host. If you happen to be listening each Sunday, you will know how I do things, how we do things here at Rima on a Sunday morning. We sort of chat about different themes or different um, topics of discussion, things that might be happening in the world, things that will shape us in the way that we become the people we are, but more so because more so because it is a way for us to sort of check in and work out how we can apply ourselves to the church. Now, being a Christian radio station, I think it's a really good tool. It's a really good resource to be able to draw on these things as a group. You know, we are we kind of can float around doing our own things as individuals at times. And we can forget that actually, you know what, we're just one teensy picture. Well, sorry, one teensy piece of the picture. And um, we can forget that together we are supposed to be a church that move in, in unity. I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm loving what is happening to the church at the moment, I, I do see some shifts. I think it's really exciting what is happening because there is a unity. And, um, yeah, just this sense of we are in this together. We can't do it on our own and we need to be unified and be aware of, of what we ourselves can contribute but also the, the gifts that are around us. And that's what we've been talking about in the last few weeks, our spiritual gifts. Now, why do I say that? Because our spiritual gifts really do impact the whole church, the dynamic of the church. And so we've been talking about what the spiritual gifts are. What are they? Um, And how do we work out what our own personal gifts are? Then how do we apply them? What do we do with them? What that sort of thing. That's sort of where we've been exploring as a group, as a, um, yeah, just trying to work out you know, what is the point, obviously, of these things called spiritual gifts? Let me give you an example. Like, well, no, let's start with a definition. So a spiritual gift for those of you who might be listening and going, I don't know what she is talking about. A spiritual gift is basically it's a supernatural ability. This is a, a definition that just popped up when I did a Google search. Um, or capacities given by the Holy Spirit to individual Christians within, within the Christian community. Um now, in this, this same explanation, they've just said these gifts are meant to be used for the edification of the church and the fulfillment of God's purposes. So there's, they're gifts that utilize, when utilized, I should say, they are for the building and the restoration and the reformation and the, the, the ultimate goal of fulfilling God's purposes. Now, some of the key points that they also observe, this is, again, just it just popped up as a, I assume, just a like a... Um, like an AI thing it just hasn't even given me where it came from but some of the things they've got here is that it's in relation to divine abilities talents or capacities granted by the Holy Spirit Um, they specify that that spiritual gifts are unique to believers and they're also used for Christian service Um, when used in service to others they build up the entire church and finally and there's there's a basically a list or there's there's lots of different types of of spiritual gifts. Now I'm going to go into some of those with you guys this morning. We've we've been through a few. Um, I in the last few weeks we've sort of explored. We talked about a few different ones. So the first week we've been doing this for two weeks prior to today. So we talked on that week about uh, the gift of administration. We also talked about the gift of giving. Now that was also in regards to our our um, you know our. 20 year like our birthday celebration stuff so we talked a little bit about that as well and just the fact that giving is it's a it is a being able to give is a gift it's having the means the resources to be able to say I want to give this I want to bless others through whatever I can in this way and financial obviously was what we talked about in that particular setting um we are still in that by the way guys if you are still someone who's been challenged with the, the reality of um 
you know, maybe just you, you feel like kind of God's prompting you in some way to look at giving financially. Obviously, we being a, a we are as an organisation, as a radio station, as a, a place on the coast that is trying to look and grow. Obviously, we are looking at where we want to go from here. And I actually heard something this week on on giving, and I thought, oh, that's changed my perspective of giving completely. Um, and even down to investments, the, the person that was speaking at the time, I wish I had the details. It was just one of those passing things that I heard and went, oh, that's really interesting. But they're talking about investments um, from a biblical perspective. And one of the aspects they talked was the investment into the future and the future generations and those to go beyond us. And I thought, oh, I'm being challenged on that right now. And obviously coming back to Rima, CC, that's obviously been our focus for the 20th birthday sort of, you know, drive. It's that... Um, you know, if you can help us to be able to pass down and, and invest in the future generation so that we can lift them up and ensure that they have a place to continue doing what is done here on an even, you know, it might be a different direction, it might be broader, it might be bigger. Who knows what God has in store for Rima Central Coast, but it certainly feels like and certainly, you know, I think the fact that we are in this building being able to do these things and we've been given the the uh, resources to do it, the materials, the everything. You know, God, I feel like God, and I'm sure these guys that I thankfully get to work with week in and week out, they can verify that it's it's sort of that proof that God is still on the move when it comes to that stuff. So we talked about that. I'm going back to giving. But again, that's an open, open door for you guys if you feel stirred in that way today. We also talked on that one particular day, we talked a little bit about um, the gift of hospitality. And yeah, that was interesting too. We last week we spoke about exhortation. I had mentioned you to you guys. I just kind of went through my own ones. Um, from memory, they were exhortation, discernment, um, mercy. Um, I can't even think. It's completely gone. But they were the three that I can remember that were mine. A wisdom was another, and um, the gift of knowledge. Yeah, actually, just on that, I no, I'll stop here. And I'll come back shortly and we'll, we'll explore that a little bit more. I'll recap from where we were last week. But this week we're going to do a few more. So we're going to explore a few more things um, in terms of gifts. Let's, let's throw it out there. I want to actually, because October has been the month to recognise our pastors, I want to sort of just take a spin this week and sort of look at what might be sort of the typical sort of things that we might see in a leadership or pastoral role, looking at the spiritual gifts of what we might typically think of as a pastor. It doesn't mean every one of them has or utilises these gifts, but, uh, yeah, I thought we'll take a little bit of a spin to it, you know, to sort of just tie it together with the fact that um, it last month was pastor's um, thank, I think it's thankful, I don't even know, pastor's appreciation month, I think is what it was classed as. Um, but yeah, let's do that. Let's talk a bit more. I will come back before too long, guys, and we'll continue from here. Lots of recap, isn't there? All right, I'll see you guys soon. Ah, that was Rejoice by Andrew Rip. What a good way to start the day, guys. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Great for us to do. Read a, kind of revitalizes, I can't talk this morning, revitalizes the soul. That sort of focus on, yeah, let's do this. This is, we've got lots to be thankful for. I do hope that you are thankful. I hope you've got lots of things to be thankful for. I am thankful for you. I'm Lindy. I'm your Sunday morning host here at Rima. And yeah, guys, it's great to have you with us each Sunday morning. It's great to have you with us anytime, actually. Um, yes, I hope your day's going well. And we are well and truly into our sort of next, um, our next sort of exploration of spiritual gifts. I kind of got a little bit just, yeah, sidetracked before I was explaining to you guys that we have covered a few things here over the last few weeks. Um, and I wanted to recap from last week with the gift of knowledge. Now, I will be honest, I don't know any of this. I'm, I'm learning this stuff as you guys are. I'm going through, I'm sort of just exploring this, this stuff, this spiritual context stuff with you guys as we go week to week. So there's a lot of it. I'm kind of going, ooh. Yeah, I hadn't thought about it like that. Okay, I guess I can see how that would apply to even, you know, how it could be for the church itself, how it might be something I personally take on board, how something, you know, it might be something I personally need to be challenged by. Again, I hope that you guys are kind of being steered towards this, where do I fit? You know, what, what do I have to offer? And you do. You've got plenty to offer. Can I just verify that you really do? Um, but we, I mentioned last week that one of my spiritual gifts when I did my 
little test. There's a spiritual, well, the spiritualgifttest.com is where I think I found mine, but there are other spiritual gift tests that you can find online. So uh, the gift of knowledge was one that I talked to you guys about. Now, I thankfully, a lot of the stuff that we cover here, I get a lot of um, bouncing. Like I, I've, Janine is one of the team, I would call her teammate because she really does help me a lot. Um, and we sort of, you know, bounce ideas off each other. She's, um, yeah, I think last week was a good one for me because she sent an email through to me and said, look, I don't know if the gift of knowledge is, is um, can also be that uh, sort of, I don't know actually about how she worded it, but it was along the lines of, you know, that awareness of just, you know, there's, um, oh, I can't think of the top of my head, but it was along the lines of, I think I had said that understanding that the, like the knowledge of the Bible and just being able to transform that into you know, uh, just simplifying, sort of just making it real life sort of stuff. And I think the feedback she had given me was that her understanding of the gift of knowledge was even more so in terms of being able to just sort of just be with someone and just have that that sort of sense or the awareness of what's going on. I think that's what she said, but I could be wrong. Janine, I do apologise if I've got that wrong. I have to go back through the emails. But it just shows you guys that we are learning together. And that's what's really cool about this is that none of us have to have it right or wrong there's aspects of all of this that we can throw into it and we can explore together. We can work this stuff out together. So, yeah, I, I kind of got that from looking at the gift of knowledge. And um, I just want to encourage you guys, if, if there's stuff there that you, if you feel like, actually, I feel like this is what this means, we, we'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Um, Obviously, I can't utilize that during the week, but it, it's kind of cool. And, and talk to your, in your own churches, your own circles about what in your church, if you don't happen to be someone, I mean, you might be up at the northern end of the coast, you might be southern, you might be across the globe, who knows where you are. But in your little world, this is what this is about. It's those, those conversations that we have that really create the awareness of what is in our own little circle. But today, guys, we're going to talk about things, we're going to talk about some of the spiritual gifts that you might be more likely to see in a sort of typical, if you like, pastoral role. Um, some of the things I think we'll cover this morning are the gift of leadership. Um, we might speak, uh, I haven't really completely gone, we'll go pastor and shepherd. Uh, and I'll play around with it because I just think it's, we'll, we'll roll with the morning, see how things pan out because there's certainly things that we might see in our, our leaders. We've just come out of what's Pastor Appreciation Month and... Um, I think sometimes we just need to acknowledge the, the leaders that we have in our communities and just um, yeah think about what they've, their gifting is. It's really important for us to recognise that they've been given gifts too, just like us. So um, let me explain to you what the gift of leadership is. Now, if you look up the meaning on spiritualgifttest.com, it'll actually give you a whole sort of summary of, of each thing. So this, the gift of leadership in this particular one, um, it's interesting because my husband is a pastor and I think I mentioned a few weeks ago that I see that he can be quite a good administrator. He's very good with that sort of stuff. And I look through some of the stuff that he's done, I think, how did you get all that done? But, and, you know, being a pastor, you kind of, you look and you go, what, do you just like have coffee with people a week or what, what, do, you, what do you do? <laughs> so I'll be honest, I know that there's those thoughts, but there, there actually is a lot of administration and they've highlighted this in this test. Um, that is one part of it. So it does kind of tie in with that administration, leadership slash pastor shepherd sort of thing. Um, they've also addressed the fact that uh, the, the word related to, um, like from the Greek word, sorry, related to leadership, it means to lead, to assist, to protect and to care for others. Um, it's, it's often tied with giving of gifts and of being a merciful person. So as someone who is, is a heart that has this sense of just, yeah, an abundance of mercy. Um, now, this is where they kind of, because we're ta talking today about the leadership and the pastor slash shepherd, there's some things they have highlighted here that I'm going to just basically echo on to you guys because it just keeps it clear. So I'm going to read literally what they have got here. It's got, this is what connects it to the pastor, the gift of pastor shepherd and what differenti differentiate it from the gifts of administration. Um, so the leadership stuff is more people orientated than task orientated. Uh, then they emphasize that obviously it's not to say that those with the gift of administration don't care for people. 
but is just specifically addressing the fact that leaders are ten- they tend to put the focus more on the people and the relationships that they're dealing with. Um, they've got a lot of scriptures there that, that they can hide, they've highlighted that we can look at and sort of go, okay, that's the, the role of a leader. Um, yeah, let me just kind of pull things together. The Holy Spirit gives the spiritual gift of leadership to some in the church to care for God's people and to lead them into a deeper relationship with, with Christ and also with each other. Now, this is word for word what they've got here. Um, now, they're, they're, this is one of the things when it comes to the church and we think of su- su- like success in the world. What do you think of? You think of money, you think of possessions, you think of all things like that. When it comes to the church, the spiritual gifting, when we're looking at leadership, it's got here, and I think it's a really important f- point for us to think about, they base their success on how well they um, help others succeed and how they then walk in their own spiritual walk. Um, so that's pretty, That's when you look at when we're, we're looking at spiritual gifts, that's a big difference between the understanding of the worldly concept of leadership and the concept in the biblical sense, the church, the spiritual gifting of leadership. It becomes about what can others achieve? How can we get them there? It's that sort of, I need to, I, I would love to see you fulfill God's, um, your, your calling. It often says that, that leaders are visionary. They're less concerned with mundane details than those with the spiritual gift of administration. Many can be very, um, you know, very business focused uh, and ultimately it's, it is about just seeing that the church is, is well equipped, that those who are in their circle, in their church circle, have those things that are deal th- you know, with situations that are, are really tedious and really stressful, like crisis situations. Now, specifically, I'm going to throw some Bible verses at you guys, so you can go and do your own research on that. They have given me, from spiritualgifttest.com, they've given me um, Romans 12, 8, 1 Thessalonians 5, 12, 1 Timothy 3, 4 to 5. Um, sorry, that was 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 4 to 5. Um, and then again, 12 and 5, chapter 5, verse 17. So there's a few things there that you guys can go and do your own research from. Obviously, we are just glancing over a lot of this stuff on a Sunday, but it's just the awareness of, okay, there are these little fine-tuned differences between some of the gifts that um, we all possess. So that's the gift of leadership. I'm going to be back before... I'll be back about... Uh, anyway, soon. Let's just go with soon, hey? Enjoy this song and I will see you guys before too long. We're going to talk more. We're going to talk Pastor Shepherd. So I'll see you then. That was Kingdom Come by Rebecca St. James. Guys, I am Lindy. I'm here at Rima CC. And we are entering Sunday. So welcome to a new day if you happen to be getting up this morning. I've been up for a few hours, as I usually am. Uh, we don't sleep in at our house. I don't know about you guys, but um, I've never actually known what a sleep in is. So if you are someone who is just rolling out of bed, congratulations. Well done. I do hope you're having a good morning. I hope that that sleep in has been enough to tie you over. Perhaps you're still sleeping and I'm just talking in the background. Who knows what's going on? But um, I do hope, regardless of what is happening in your world, that you're having a good one. And, yep, that you are ready for yet another fantastic day. You do need to get out of bed at some point. The day is waiting. It's it's a bright, beautiful, happy day. It's going to be a good one. I'm thinking hopeful things for you. Crossing my toes, crossing my fingers. Um, yeah, saying a little prayer for you more than anything. Uh, and isn't it awesome to know that we do have a God who answers prayer. Prayer is pretty pretty it, that in itself you know what that is a gift and actually is a gift that we can rely on the gift of prayer i don't know how i actually don't know how people do it without it i don't know how they do it without god i was talking to someone last week and i just said i just don't understand it how do you go through life with just yeah i anyway i'm glad that i don't know and i'm praying for those who do or are yet to find god that they will find it and they have those moments of whoa, why did I battle so long on my own when there is a God who I can talk to all the time? If you are one of those, I just, I promise you, he's listening. He wants to hear you. He's interested. Spend some time in prayer. Prayer is nothing fancy. It's literally just a, hey God, I don't know what's going on or, hey God, uh, can you help me through this? Hey God, I, I'm i trying to work you out. Hey God, doesn't matter. You just talk. You just talk like there's someone else in the room. He's, he is actually there. He's listening to every word, every thought. Actually, every thought before you even have them. So, eh, how has that for? Yeah, that's interesting little concept. But yeah, it's 
actually phenomenal. Anyway, I'm glad that I know him. I hope and pray you get to know him too. Guys, we're talking the spiritual gifts. We are talking right now about the gift of the pastor or the shepherd. Um, We talked a little bit a moment ago, a few moments ago, about the gift of leadership and the spiritual gift that is given to us. Now, what is a spiritual gift? Basically, if I'm just going to go sort of recap for those who are joining me now, there's sort of spiritual gifts that they're special abilities, they're talents, there's they're things, the capacities given to individ, like individual Christians, and they're specifically from the Holy Spirit for the purpose of serving God, but also the church as a whole. Um, so that's basically what it is. It's one of these things that we kind of find ourselves going, I didn't know I could do that, but God's allowed me to do it, so now I need to apply that to the church. And we talked a little bit about leadership itself and how um, leadership in terms of worldly sort of understanding, it, leadership is, is so driven. It's like I need to get to a place through power, through money, through possessions, through whatever. And that's a worldly sort of sense of leadership if we kind of compare the two. Uh, it doesn't mean it's always that way, but it, it can be an aspect that sort of differentiates between the worldly sense and how we can use leadership in the church context. Obviously, every situation is different. So, I, you know, I say that, but there's this sort of general overview that, you know, there is a, a, a difference there. The spiritual leadership of in a church or spiritual context, um, yeah, it's it's more driven towards how do we care for and empower those in our community. How do we see them get to where they need to be in, in ter- like teaching and, and serving and finding their own spiritual gift? Um, yeah, it's, it is a pre- pretty big difference, really. It's kind of like, okay, we can be so driven on where we want to go and how we become, or we can be very focused on the church and lifting others up. So that's kind of what we explored before. Now, the gift of the pastor or shepherd. Now, guys, I'm finding this definition today from spiritualgifttest.com. I haven't always gone to this one particular website, but it's just, it's clear, it's concise. It sort of helps me to just present this to a way, in a way to you guys that's just simple. It's just, um, so you guys can actually go back to that spiritualgiftstest.com. And you can look up this stuff yourself. You can kind of get a feel for what, you know, where you fit. There's a test that you can actually do yourself. There are other websites you can go to as well. Um, But this is just, I just thought, hey, let's just keep it simple this morning and keep it pretty direct. We're talking leadership. We're talking now about the pastor and the chef or the shepherd, if you like. Now, I'm going to just basically read to you, I'll summarize, but what they've got here. So the spiritual gift of a pastor or a pastor slash shepherd, if you like, is one that carries many different responsibilities. This gift is closely related related to the spiritual gifts of leadership and teaching. Now, we've seen that before. We talked about that a little bit. Um, I'm not going to try and read the Greek word, but they have given that to us. And basically, it, the meaning of that is shepherd or overseer. So this is someone who's who's just keeping, keeping kind of... Um, not control, but keeping an oversight over what's happening, the interactions that are occurring, that sort of thing. In the biblical context, shepherds had several different responsibilities to their sheep and ultimately to the owner of the sheep. So this is this is where I think it's really, you look at our leaders, you look at our pastors, our ministers in, the, in this region, this is the sort of things that they're likely to be feeling responsible for doing. Um, they keep a lookout for predators and protected the sheep from, sorry, sheep, not sheeps, from attackers, again, apply that to the, the church. Uh, they cared for wounded and sick sheep, nursing them back to health. They rescued them if they became lost or trapped. They spent enormous amounts of time with them, guiding them to the places of nourishment and rest. The result was a trust and relationship that kept the sheep following the shepherd. Uh, the sheep were attuned to the shepherd's voice to the point that even if they were temporarily mixed with another herd, at the call of the shepherd, they would be sorry. They would separate and follow him. Uh, pastors are called to she- called shepherds. I'm really struggling this morning. I'm sorry because their calling and gifting are much like those who care for sheep. They are called and gifted to care for the spiritual well-being of a local body of God's people. Now that's what we're saying. This is this is a, a church thing. This is how we the, our pastors apply these skills or these giftings. Pastors are first and foremost servants, so they're there for, not for themselves. They are servants to God and they're servants of his people. Um, they're obviously given a mixture of abilities by grace, they've emphasised, that allows them to serve the needs of an entire community. 
Uh, the goal of the pastor is to reveal the glory of God in Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit to a people who need God's grace for life. So it's, it all becomes about that tying together. It's that oversight. It's that need to protect those within in the, the, that you know setting or that, that realm. It, it might be, I've, we've got a friend who does online church. So her, her situation would be different. It would be a different sort of shepherding. Um, but you can see the difference and you can, I don't know about you guys, but I, I read through this and I'm like, yeah, there's some pretty special people out there who do do this sort of thing. They really take in and love and uh, really nurture and, and know that um, the relationship that they have with their people needs to be, um, it needs to be handled with a tedious sort of, <laughs> well, it needs to be handled with a strength that I think many of us don't have. So, guys, if you are a pastor this morning on your way to church or you are already at church or you happen to be someone who's related to a pastor or a minister in this region, again, I'm looking at these responsibilities you guys have and I just want to say thank you because it's a big deal. It really is. It's not just a case of let's just roll around and have some coffee and, you know, some point in the, the middle of the week. I, I get that your role is... There's a lot of responsibility and your ultimate responsibility is, is standing before God you know, and, and saying and explaining how you have helped those in your community. So thank you for what you do because honestly, I don't think you hear it enough. I just, I think, yeah, I just want to say thank you. And if you are someone who thinks, yep, I feel that stirring. I feel like God is calling me to this. Um, I, my husband often says that he had an older man pull him aside the day that he was ordained as a minister back in states who said if you can do anything else do it but if you if you believe that you you are meant to be doing this then you do it with with a hundred percent guys if you feel that stirring i have you have my prayers and i pray for your strength and to follow through and become what it is that god wants you to be in this way because we do need we need pastors we need pastors to stand up and go i want to look after my the, you know, god's people um, but yeah, just encourage you in that. So anyway, we'll be back before too long, guys. Uh, we'll continue with our, our little journey of spiritual gifts. I'll be back soon. See you soon, guys. Welcome back, Coasties, and welcome to yet another fantastic day. I am hoping so. Anyway, we were just listening to All In by Matthew West. So let me ask you, are you all in? Is it all happening? Are you, are you fully there? Are you completely committed? I hope so. I hope you know that God is all in with you. Absolutely, 100%. Even more so, he loves you big time. Uh, and that is a very cool reality. I don't know about you guys, but I am thankful for that. And I'm thankful that you are here this morning with me. Hope you're having a beautiful one. I really do genuinely mean that. I know that I say it and it just might sound like words, but they're not. I really do hope you're having the best of all situations. If you're in some rough stuff at the moment, I hope that today's a brighter day. If you're in a great pe period of time in your life, I hope it's even better than normal. I hope that things are going to be brilliant for you today. It is Sunday and Sunday is the opportunity for a new beginning. Let's put it that way. It's a good start. It's a good place for us to start. Guys, yeah, we're talking spiritual gifts. We've been talking about this for the last three weeks. There's a lot to cover. Can you believe that? It's it's actually bigger than what I thought. It was um, When I initially thought about this, I thought, oh, yeah, that might come me for a few weeks. Just I was... Probably, if I'm honest, you know what? I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna be honest with you guys. I decided to do spiritual gifts because I was like, okay, what's something that's just not gonna be too heavy for me? What's something that's gonna be like, okay, I can talk about that and not get caught up in the emotions of other things. You know, life can be heavy at times, so it's nice to have that little thing where you just veer off and you talk about stuff that's not so heavy. And this is in this context, I think it's a pretty good distraction for me. The gift of miracles is what we're going to. Explain explore now. We talked earlier this morning about the gift of leadership, the gift of the pastor or the shepherd. Now we're going to talk about the gift of miracles. Now October was actually Pastors Appreciation Month. I don't know how I know that, but I, yeah, apparently I do. Um, and so I thought, well, you know, we've just crossed the line. So let's just kind of go back. Let's just do a day on the things that we might see in our pastors or might be more likely to see in those who are leading us through the churchy stuff. Uh, and so I thought we'll kind of stay with the gift of leadership and the pastor or shepherd sort of thing. Um, and now we're going to explore the gift of miracles. Now, this is obviously not something that we're going to see just necessarily for those who are leaders in our church world. It is something that Jesus has given us through the Holy Spirit that any one of us can be a part of. Um, and, yeah, I actually found myself, I, last week my husband was sick, so I, at the last minute, ended up, I ended up speaking at church and I haven't, normally when I do stuff at church, I do a bit more creative sort of stuff. So I, you know, we do 
we do sort of context of, I don't know, a little bit different to your centre church stuff. So last week I thought, no, I need to cut it back and just go just straight down the line. Let's just talk. Let's just look at God's word. Let's just let's just go with that. So I did it. And obviously you guys are aware of my own journey with my daughter and there have been moments where I've been going, I don't know what to do. I just don't know. I, I, are you even responding to me, God? I don't know how to help her, all that sort of thing. So it's been frustrating. It's been trying to make sense of all the stuff that's going on. And um, and I had, I really felt God was stirring me to look at the, the you know, it's uh, the woman who grabs the cloth of Jesus. And I hadn't realized until I went back and actually looked at it myself that there's actually two different stories going amongst that. And they're both... They are both acts of miracles. They're, they're miracles. There's, it starts with a faith, but there's the miracle in that. And, um, yeah, it really challenged me because I thought, do I actually believe in this? Do I actually believe that Jesus can do this? Of course I do. But do I, to the core of me, do I actually believe it? Or am I so, um, am I so numbed by the worldly stuff that tells me these are the only options. So I don't mean that. I, I don't mean, well, I've got to be very cautious with how I approach this, but what I mean is we can be so um, so led to believe that medicine is the only way of dealing with situations that are, are frustrating, that we forget that we've got a God who does do the miracles and we've got people in our world, in our church world even, who are those who work with the miracles. They are, they're, they're bold in how they proclaim things. Um, spiritual gifts, like when we look at that, I want to read to you guys, guys, basically what the gift of miracles actually encompasses, what is, what's involved in it and remind you that we are dealing with a God who is not done. He is not finished with those Bible stories. He is a God who does, you know, he does still perform miracles. And yes, some of those miracles come in the form of things like medicine. Some of those are, are our answers or the, our miracles. But sometimes he does do those spontaneous, those miraculous, instant miracles too. And I think it's really um, important for us to remember that. But let me just look at this with you and explain to you from what I have got in front of me, again, from spiritualgiftstest.com. I couldn't get my head around that one for a moment. My mouth was going a little low. Um, but yeah, just so we can just you know, look at it together. The spiritual gift of miracles is described in scripture much like the gift of healing. So they go hand in hand. It is found in 1 Corinthians 12, 10, and the Greek phrase, it's, I'm not going to pronounce this correctly, but it's, it's along the lines of energomato, dynamion, dynamion, there you go. You can tell it's the first time I've said that. Literally translate workings of powers. Uh, the double plural most likely means that these gifts were diverse and were not permanently available at the will of the gift believer but instead were bestowed at various times and circumstances. So in terms of that, they're saying the gifts are subject to the divine will of God. So it depends on God's uh, workings in that moment and his purposes. And they're not decided by the one who performs the miraculous work. So I can't just turn up and say, you know what, I really feel God's given me the gift of miracles right now, so I'm going to perform a miracle in you. I'm not a magician. I don't work that way. Um, and if I was given this gift of miracles, which I believe that any one of us could be have, could experience at any time, uh, yeah, it's not like you just flick on a switch and go, yep, cool, I've got you healed. It is down to the divine will of God. What does he want to do in this person's life? What does he want to do in this situation? How does he want to do that? Uh, this website goes on further to say that um, we know that Jesus performed many miracles in his earthly ministry and even more than those that were actually recorded in scripture. The apostles also recorded, uh, or sorry, performed miracles of all kinds and they included casting out demons, healings, raising people, sorry, raising people from the dead, striking people dead, as much as we don't want to look at that one, kind, uh, causing blindness and much more. Other believers performed miracles as well, including Stephen and Philip. Uh, miracles were given by God to the church to reveal the presence and glory of God among his people and to create a sense of awe and wonder and godly fear. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I get that, oh, that, wow, like that, there is when you think of miracles, it is that sense of, I cannot believe this. Um, yeah, it's it's just, they, again, they just emphasise in this one particular site that uh, they take care not to draw attention to themselves if those if they are granted with this gift. Um, and that they are very, very aware that it comes back to pointing it back to Jesus. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, 
they are the reasons that these miracles are happening. Um, yeah, it's it's a powerful move, but it's it's a, I think there's a sense of humbleness in it, and I think it's um yeah I think we as a church we need to be so aware of the gift of miracles and to not downplay God's power. I want to encourage you this morning, guys. If you've been tested in that in the last few weeks, if you there is something in you that's going. Yeah, well, God probably doesn't really want to do that for me. Where is where do you line up with that? What is there something in you that needs to shift? Does God need to be able to perform a miracle? But you know, there's are you limiting Him? I guess is the question. Are you limiting what He is able to and wants to do in your life, in a, a friend's life, in a you know, it doesn't matter. There's something in it and uh, you can be, you might be someone who you don't even realize you actually have the gift of miracles within you. You don't realize that God's going to call you to it at some point. But I think every one of us needs to be mindful that we don't know when he's going to drop these things on us and say, right, here it is. I need you to use this, this gift now. So it's being prepared. It's being prepared for what is to come and what he wants to do in and through us so that we can be the thriving church together. More than anything, that we have that understanding that None of it, absolutely none of it is going to be important if we don't recognize and point our fingers back up and say, it's God. He's on it. He's done it. He's, he's, a, he's a God of, ah, oh, he's a good God. Let's just leave it at that. All right, guys, I'll be back before too long and we're going to go one more, one more gift and then I'm going to get out of here for a bit. So I will see you shortly. You got this. That's love and the outcome. And you do got this. You've got this. It is Sunday. It's the start of a new day. It's the start of a new week. It's the start of a new everything. It's the start of a new working week for you guys. Well, well, I guess Friday was, I guess Friday was the first technically, but hey, let's just, let's overlook that one. This is the first full week of the month. Let's just say that. And it is the last, second last month of the year. That's a bit crazy. Anyway, uh, guys, we've been talking spiritual gifts here this morning at Rima CC. If you don't listen normally, my name is Lindy and I kind of hang around here on a Sunday morning. You guys are very delightful. Um, You are a joy to spend some time with and you are very patient and kind to me because you put up with me. So thank you. I do appreciate it. But anyway, I'm going to get back on track, guys. We've been talking spiritual gifts and um, we've covered a few this morning. So I've been talking a little bit about the sort of things that we might see in our leaders. Now, I did cover just before we kind of broke up a few songs and we had, you know, um, a few things happening. But, yeah, I um, was talking about the gifts of miracles and we I sort of today lean towards leaders in our church sort of setting, so our pastors and that sort of stuff, the things that we might be likely to see in in who they are, in terms of their leadership, that's a gift in itself. Um, their their sense of being a pastor and caring for their she- their sheep, if you like, if we call ourselves sheep, um, and yeah, just the accountability to God in that. We also talked about miracles. Now, miracles, I didn't actually tie that so much with uh, the leaders in our church because it is something that if any one of us at any time may be likely to say, you know what, I, I'm going to pray for this. I'm, I'm going to walk with you through this but I think sometimes we tend to see our leaders if you like there's a boldness in them when they you know you might see them praying at church and there's something in them that there's just this this uprising where you can see the spirit just burning and just doing his thing I I had a a really nice encounter a few weeks ago I had we've got a young guy at church he is as a teenager and I was doing something and he came to me afterwards and he said, I can, he said, well, as you were talking, I just saw your heart on fire. And I said, actually, it's really bizarre that you said that. But I said, because the week before that, I was sitting watching my husband and I literally, I said, I've never had this happen to me before, but I literally saw from his neck to his toes, this, this burning. And it was just this, it sounds almost crazy, but uh, it's, yeah, I think that's, that's these little glimmers of, um, sort of the Holy Spirit stirring in different ways. And that's what I think I'm trying to lean towards today, guys, is that understanding that we might not understand the giftings that God has given us in one time or context or something like that, but he has the ability to change us. He has the ability to um, bring us or present us to different things that may not have made sense at one particular time, but in that moment they suddenly do. He may have, you know, maybe testing our spiritual gifts in in the way that um, we are willing to allow him to do what he wants to do through us. 
And that's an individual thing and that's a church thing. It can be us, it can be the church as a whole. And uh, I guess I probably the main point of all of it is just the flexibility that's needed in processing spiritual gifts and being open to God going, I needed that for a season, but now I'm going to actually work on you from a different angle and I want to just... I want to give you this gifting so you can use it in this setting. And I actually mentioned that a few weeks ago. I hadn't really thought about that till now. But when I looked at my results, if you like, from just doing a little online spiritual gift test, and I there's one in, in front of me at the moment that's uh, literally from a website called spiritualgiftgiftstest.com. You can go through and work out what are your spiritual gifts. And I... The results that came back, that a lot of them were similar, but some of them were very, very different. And I thought that shows me that God has been working on me in a different way. And um, yeah, there was a time there where, I mean, I've always loved people, but there was a time there that mercy certainly wasn't one of them because I was so burnt out by people. So God needed to renew and refresh me and, and, and work on me before I could even think about caring for other people. And I, I think that's what I'm just kind of leaning towards is that we, we do change, we do grow, we do mature, we do experience life sometimes to a point where it does burn us out. But we need to be open to God going, yep, that was a part of your journey there. I'm going to just shift it around a little bit. I want to give you something else to utilize for a while. We might come back to that. And yeah, it's, it's just being open to God's direction and what he's doing in our lives as individuals. Um, I actually don't think I'm going to go any further today. I think I might leave it there just because uh, there is a lot more to get into, but, um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's some good stuff. It's, it's really interesting things. Uh, I do hope and pray you are going to get a lot out of these sort of, um, I don't know, just those little, what is it called? Just that sort of nudge, nudge off you go. You, you go and see how God can use you sort of things. Um, but yeah, I thank you again this morning, guys, for spending some time with me. I hope you're going to have a great week. I am looking forward to catching up with you next Sunday. We'll talk some more stuff, Holy Spirit, sort of led spiritual gifting, sort of where's Jesus and all of it, where, you know, how does all that. Um, looking forward to it. I hope you're going to have a beautiful week. I'll see you guys back here next Sunday. Have a fantastic one and I'll see you soon. All right. So long, guys. See ya.